got very good arms. He didn't fall? Inconceivable! You keep using the word. I do not think it means what you think it means. Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes, and uh, it's time for This Week in X-Men. We are going to be reviewing Sword Number 1, the newest X-Men comic from Al Ewing and Valerio Shitty. Uh, I'm giving it two and a half stars. I, I don't know if it's a recommend or it's an, if it's not a recommend. I'm going to have to talk to Joe about this and come to my conclusion at the end. It's right on the it's right on the verge of it. It might be a recommended. I'm not really sure at this time. Then we also got some quotes from Jonathan Hickman where he's talking about Reign of X and kind of what it what it's intended to do, and also about the X Corp uh, comic book that we had mention of. I believe it was last summer, but we haven't heard anything about it. Jonathan Hickman kind of confirmed that it is going to be coming out. But not exactly uh, what we were expecting. And I know normally Doc would be here. He is the X Men uh, historian, the Marvel aficionado. He is feeling under the weather. So if you could send him some good vibes, I would really appreciate that. Hopefully he'll be uh, feeling right as rain next week and be back here uh, to do this week in X Men. But I do have I uh, have a ringer, folks. I got to fill it. He's uh, he's an independent writer. He's an independent editor. He's an award winning editor. He is Joe Carallo. How are you doing, Joe? I'm all right, Wes. How are you? I'm doing great. So people know that you're a writer and stuff, but they might not realize you are an absolute X-Men fanatic. Yes. No, I, I absolutely love X-Men. Yeah. So we, we've been talking about uh, Tennis Wars and all that, and this is one of the comics, the first comic that's really spitting out of it. It is like the first launch during Reign of, uh, Reign of X. Do you think it's Reign of X or Reign of Ten? Uh... I feel like they keep switching it up just to mess with everyone. So this is probably Reign of X. And then they'll too. have, and then it'll be like 10 core. <laughs> yeah, good. We really keep us all on our toes. Yeah. Well, this is Al Ewing. Uh, obviously, he's one of the hotter writers at Marvel Comics. He's doing a Immortal Hulk, although that's ending or kind of wrapping up soon. Guardians of the Galaxy has got a, a big independent comic now. Valerio Shitty. Obviously, they work together on the Empire event not the biggest fan but it wasn't the worst thing in the history of uh, comic books either yeah and the first thing that kind of stood out to me is for the most part the art is pretty okay but it's not up to valerio shitty's normal standards and there are some close-ups of magneto's face and he always looks off throughout the entire issue did you notice that yeah no i i, I did notice that it's um <clears throat> but, but this yeah, is one I... of the better faces and he still looks <laughs> off you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but like it's it's also something you were kind of leading to there as well. Is a lot of this comic is Magneto walking through sword. Mm -hmm. It's uh, almost all of it. Yeah. So it, it, the the art was a little bit of a letdown. Not exactly what I expected. But getting into the plot, that isn't what this is. This is an inspection. Magneto is coming up from Krakoa to inspect the uh, the X Men or are they the X-Men? Charles Mutant Nation's space station, the peak. It's the peak, right? Yeah, it's the peak. Yeah. He comes up for an inspection, and that is what the plot is. He's going from station to station, and he's meeting the members of the space station's crew and talking about them. And it does not make for the most exciting plot I've ever read in my life. Uh, no, it's, um, it's very... It feels like an issue zero more than an issue one. I agree. You know, it's dialogue it, intensive. <laughs> it's very just. It's dialogue intensive. It's very. You, you know, it's. I, I'm trying to think of a way to say this without sounding too condescending, but it's like, it feels very fan fictiony. Like when you're reading a fan fiction, and it's like, here's my favorite character, Magneto. Here's Magneto meeting another character. Say hi. You two know each other from another thing. This is awkward. Like, there's, it's just a lot of that. And it, it seems to be in the service of nothing. There's no antagonist set up. There's no real goal set up. There's no... We, we don't really get a, a firm sort of sense of what the stakes are here. Just who the crew are. That's kind of the weirdest part. There's a lot of random characters. And if you're not familiar with them... When the interactions happened, they felt really off. There's a Fabian Cortez. He's like speaking in old English and like bowing to Magneto. 
There's a character called Peepers. It feels like he and Magneto must be old friends. There's a few characters like that. And I was like, there's kind of, they're kind of quirky, but I don't know who the character is, so I don't get where this is coming from. Yeah, it's the, some of these characters I, I don't recognize um, and, and don't understand, you know, the context immediately. And uh, yeah, it's th there's that like Fabian Cortez was the one who really like I was like, oh, yeah, Fabian Cortez. I haven't seen you in a little while or uh, thought of you in a bit. And and yeah, they just kind of do it in. Again, like it felt super fanfic y. It was just like, yeah. oh, you remember Fabian Cortez? Remember X Men number one with Jim Lee? Remember the Jim Lee stuff and how Fabian and, and uh, Magneto didn't really get along? Well, or they did and then it didn't work out. Like all that stuff. It's like, hey, here we go. He's it, the medical officer. But I'm. Yeah, there's a lot of. So much of, of Hickman's X Men has felt like just giving jobs to people for no reason. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like you, you don't all need to find and comb through all of these mutant characters to give them jobs and just have them keep showing up randomly and just be like, I'm this person and this is my job. Thank you. And then just keep rotating that. It's, I don't know. It, it makes for very weird writing. I agree. So it's not the greatest plot. It is lots of dialogue, but it's mostly set up. And most of what it's setting up is this concept of the six. Obviously, we know who the five are. That is the, the team that resurrects mutants. Here they're talking about the six the whole time. It was a little bit confusing because when you yeah. get the original uh, page, and I don't have it here, with the introduction of the crew, there's six departments. So are the six the six heads of the departments? And then there's six characters that have uh, peak logos on them that are strung throughout, and they're kind of random. And then you have a little blacked out part that says they're they're subordinate to some organization that you're not aware of. So are those the six? But what you end up finding out is like the six are this like super crew of te teleporters that are going to work together and kind of highlight each other's powers, and they're going to magnify their ability to transport throughout the galaxy, right? Yeah, it's cheese. I mean, uh, there's uh, is that the page there where they also do the other thing with the no, uh, right before that, where they talk about uh, mutant technology? Yeah, and, when they're talking to Wiz Kid and he's talking about how he's he's able to uh, mold or uh, integrate the Krakoan technology into this to this uh into the space station, then he kind of gets into a little more deeper later. Yeah, and then they talk about this thing where it's like, you know, two mutants using, uh, you know, coordinating together for like a long distance tactics or attack known as the fastball special, which again, is just one of those things that it reads like bad fan fiction. That's, that's yeah. what like a high schooler would come up with who was reading Claremont and was like, oh, it'd be cool. And, you know, like we're calling it the fastballs because remember Colossus and Wolverine? That's fun. You know, like it, it just it doesn't it doesn't feel inspired or at all interesting. Yeah. I, and the name's too similar to the five. And yep. if you have a group of expert teleporters, where the hell is Nightcrawler? Yeah. Well, and again, it's. I, I don't like this this kind of stuff. I, I don't like, um, you know, they, they did stuff like this in, like, Second Coming, too, where they, you had the whole plot line in the beginning where it was like they were trying to take out all the teleporters. Like, the I don't like how X-Men turned into this weird, like, tactical thing where it was like, we have to use all the teleporters to do this and put all the, you know... Uh, telepaths. So they can do... Uh, intelligence gathering. Yeah, like it's um, it's one of those ideas that was always stupid and it's never done right and people keep going back to it and it's it's very, very stupid and I, I hate how they do it every time they do it. it it's just, it feels farcical. Yeah. You know? So who do you think is going to be the seven? Oh, jeez. I, 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 someone who is going to be out of nowhere and just make me groan. Because that's a lot of this. It's just like uh, people just coming back. Like, remember me? I 
I was in this issue and uh, I have a weird relationship with you, uh, Magneto or, or someone, you know, it's, uh, but speaking of weird relationships though, um, one of the interesting things from this issue is um, bringing up uh, Wanda. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, now let's get to that one. So that is one of the, the hinted at plot lines within this is where they're, they're, they're talking about, they, they've got like their, uh, ambassador or their liaison she's she's uh having some combat i believe with with the uh with the Cree. yeah and uh so they're they're talking about it and it turns out they're not happy that the the mutant nation of krakoa don't like wanda because she is the mother of i believe not hulkling it's wicked it's, uh, it's wicked yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so they 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 hire her, hold her in high regard and that's going to end up causing problems in the future, as far as the their space relations, obviously this is the space arm of Krakoa itself. It, I, I think they'll probably play out. That'll play out in the in the future. I think this actually sounds cool, although they don't get really into it. They don't get that into it. It also feels like a little bit of a stretch. Like, why do you care what Krakoa thinks of you know Wiccan's mom? Like. We, we don't even necessarily have a strong sense at this point, at least for a while, how how Wiccan feels about Wanda at this point. You, you know, like, I'm sure it's a very complicated relationship. Yeah, and she did do something pretty heinous to uh, Mutant, so. Yeah, so, so this, like, while this is, this nugget is is interesting, and it's interesting seeing uh, how it plays out with someone like Magneto, of course, it also feels like a stretch. It, it feels very much like, oh, what's something that might be interesting? Let's do that. And it's like, actually, this, and again, like a lot of fan fiction, this idea you have is a lot more interesting to you than it probably is to anyone else. <laughs> and there's another thing in here that I thought was odd, and it's this character brand. She's like the commander of the space station, the peak, she resigned her position at uh, Alpha Flight. Yeah. But when she's talking to Magneto, and it's very contentious, she's only there for the space exploration and to uh, basically protect the solar system. But she has no allegiance to Krakoa. But the peak is a Krakoan space station. There are certainly mutants out there that have plenty of space exploration uh, skills and time doing that. Why would you ever pick this person to be in charge? Yeah, it, it is weird. I, I mean, Abigail Brand just goes back to the original creation of Sword with Astonishing X Men from Whedon and all that. So, so that's I guess that's it. <laughs> but yeah, but so, so the, the, you know, Vulcan just came back. He was out in space for a long time. Put him in charge. Yeah, I mean, or just have Magneto in charge. You remember Asteroid M? I, I mean, everyone everyone likes, you, you know, making these references that people remember. So it's like, why isn't Magneto just in charge? Like, can't he be on the council and also be in charge of this or something? Like, I, I, I don't I don't get it. Yeah, it, it didn't make sense. Why would you put anyone in charge of your, like, multi-billion dollar space station with all these great uh, technologies that you're using to uh, house and, and implement the six so they can teleport across galaxies. And we'll kind of get into a little bit of what we know about that. Why would you put anyone that wasn't fully on board with the Kirkoan message and the Kirkoan team in charge? Yeah, it's, yeah, again, it just, it, yeah, it just, it reads like, oh, well, this was the person in sword. For like the they wanted era. conflict. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. um, but they want a conflict, but we still don't really get conflict in this issue. No, no, they, they're just snarky to each other. Yeah. They're just setting it up. Like I said, there's a lot of stuff. Like there's in one of the white pages when they when they have the team descriptions, there is like a I think like a psionic analyst that is blacked out. You don't know the name of that character, though they're on the space station. I imagine we'll get that revealed. And there's several things that are blacked out that are kind of mysteries, but that's all it really is. It's it's all just laying uh laying the groundwork for future issues. Now, finally, we do see the six in uh, in action. It somewhat looks interesting while, while they're traveling uh, and teleporting through the galaxy. And when they come back, you know, they say, so we broke some laws, you know, cosmic laws, but we made it back and they've got this crystal. 
not sure what the crystal is. I was like, is that a Chiar crystal? Where's where's that crystal from? But by the time I got here, it was like I was just kind of happy it was over. Yeah, I, I didn't really care. Um, there was nothing about it that they set up that made they it. They didn't name control. what it was. They didn't put any stakes on this. They just did it. Yeah, and, and I mean, uh, also, I, I don't know where you land on this, but like, I, I've gotten to a point where they like black out so many things on these like white page prose pieces that I don't I don't care anymore. Black the whole thing out. I don't care. Yeah. And, W- whatever it's you'll reveal it when you reveal it like uh, that mystery of being like ooh, what's this about like has has faded because they overuse that trope to this at this point where i i've like just trained myself to like shut my brain off and just be like whatever they'll tell me when they tell me i don't care mm-hmm. <laughs> so as set up it, it is effective you know you meet the crew you you kind of get what the relationships are you see the 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 setup of as far as the the confrontations and things like that. I don't think it was ultimately all that successful because it just wasn't interesting to read. So i you know, I'll say it's still a two and a half star comic, but I don't really recommend it because what's the hook? Yeah, there, there's no hook to this. It's um, this is one of those things where I, I don't know, maybe it's a soft recommend with like an asterisk of like issue, like it's fine. Um, there, there's nothing like bad about it. There, there have been com- like there have been some X books that have come out that have like actively annoyed me or have been just bad comics. This isn't a bad comic. It's fine. Um, there, there's nothing inherently wrong or distasteful about it or anything like that. Just nothing happens. So, I think there's plenty of potential for issue like two or three to blow me away and be like, wow, all this stuff happens. Like everything could happen in issue two. So, so I do give that like soft recommendation of, you know, you might be getting it on the ground floor of, of a really interesting story, but it's really more of an issue zero than an issue one. It's really more of a, this should have been like the free comic book day issue of of sword to get you to want to pick up the main series it doesn't read like a proper issue one yeah i agree with that so those are our thoughts on sword now we do have a there are some quotes from jonathan hickman obviously he is the head of x over at marvel comics we we are exiting dawn of x and we are entering uh reign of x and this is what he had to say about reign of x that it's not really so much of a, a theme for the X-Men line, but if he had to like narrow it down, the word he would use is Reign of X is about expansion. Now that could mean a lot of things, Joe. That could be they're expanding like the scope of Krakoa. You know, obviously they just move into space. Uh, you know, how far out into space are they gonna move? Are, are they gonna inhabit more islands? We know they're, they're in the, the Atlantic, they're in the Pacific. You know, are, are they expansion as, as far as uh, Krakoa's scope in, in the, uh, the Marvel universe? But, or it could be they're expanding, it feels like they're expanding the amount of characters because they just added another like eight or 10 characters in um, in Sword. Or it could just be they're expanding the line and adding more comic book. What did you take it that he was talking about as far as expansion in Reign of X? Um, I feel like it's, it's a couple of things. I feel like it's obviously the space exploration um, with, with Sword, but it's also going to be Krakoa and Arako now being merged back together and all these new mutants. Um, who are there. So I think it's going to be dealing with the combination of, of those two factors being the, the biggest things that are going to be pushing the narrative forward uh, coming up. Mm-hmm. So that, that was interesting. So Rate of X is all about expansion, according to Jonathan Hickman. And he also gave us an, uh, an update on export. Now, the, the only word I had was from an artist named Carmen Carnero. I believe that she said that uh, she was attached to a writer and they were going to be launching export. I think it was early this year. We never got it solicited. It never came out. And this is the update that Jonathan Hickman gave uh, about that. He said, we just nailed down the interior and cover artist this week. He can't remember exactly when it's going to come out, but there is going to be an X-Corp book. I would imagine that means Carmen Carnero is no longer associated with it. And if they just nailed down the artist, you know, we're talking at least like 60 to 90 days 
probably before it's even solicited, right? Yeah, I, I mean, this is the kind of thing where it's like I wouldn't expect the book to come out for at least six months because mm -hmm. um, they're going to want to get a little bit ahead and, and figure it out. Um, you know, unless they've been sitting on the script, maybe it'll be like five months, you, you know, but the, it's going to take them some time. It's very possible they'll wrap up one of the existing books and have this take over. Um, so we might not be necessarily e expanding the line further, you know, um, it, it's possible. We won't know if, if they're ending a book before it comes out until, you know, a few months from now. So now it feels yeah. like there's a lot of overlap on some of these teams as far as like, it feels like X-Force and Marauders are kind of doing similar stuff. Is there a space for X-Corp with, with what they are doing with Marauders and the, the Hellfire Trading uh, Corporation? I mean, it, it feels like there, there's some room, but we're going to have to see what they do with these books in the next two to three months. Because I, I think one of the the problems that, that Ten of Swords created was in order to do the event crossing over every book in the line, they kind of muddied everything and made oh, all the books. Yeah, they made all the books seem interchangeable. Um, they weakened the the individuality of each book. So they need to take some time to reaffirm what these books are about in the coming months. Uh, so that way we have a better idea of what they're going to restore the identity of the, of the, the, the book and its purpose. Yeah. You know, I, I think that's one of the, the worst things we got out of 10 of swords. And I hope that reign of X is going to bring us back to a point where the books can kind of stand on their own so that way, it, it's going to be easier to pick and choose what what you want to read. I, I think you ended up uh, irritating more readers by making them pick up books they weren't necessarily going to want to in order to understand the story, which you really had to with you know Ten of Swords to get everything that was going on. Mm -hmm. So, and, and to, to a lesser extent, stuff that was going on in Dawn of X too. They would you know kill off characters in one book and bring them back in another. You know, I, I'm hoping that they've gotten some feedback on that and that we can go back to, you know what, there's, I can pick up the main X book and maybe two or three other titles I really like and expand and contract on my terms rather than uh, be thrown into these big crossover events. I couldn't agree with you more. Obviously, uh, Perch was on the channel. He said he believes that there's going to be two events associated with Reign of X as it goes on. We shall see. That's going to basically do it for this week in X-Men. Uh, Sword number one came out from Al Ewing, Valerio Shitty. The art was not up to Valerio Shitty's uh, recent standards, in my opinion. It is a lot of setup. It's a dialogue and intensive book. If you're not familiar with all the characters, there's some stuff that just feels like it comes out of the blue. You know, it... it it might be setting up a great story, but it's it's hard to give a, a, a solid recommendation either way because um, nothing, not much happens. And obviously we did get some quotes from Jonathan Hickman talking about Reign of X and, and X Corp. Joe, is there anything else you wanted to say before we kind of wrap this up? Not too much other than um, I, I think there's a lot of potential for interesting stuff with Wanda that's revealed here. Um, I'm interested to see uh, sort of what happens with like Magneto and... Uh, Fabian Cortez. Uh, I think there's uh, a lot of potential for interesting stuff there. Uh, you know, we'll have to see. I'm probably going to read the next couple of issues since I read the first issue and want to see where this is going. Uh, it has that potential to be a really great second and third issue, but we, we just don't know yet, which is why I'm, I'm giving it like a, you know, I agree with the two and a half stars and, and think it's, you know, give that like soft recommend with that asterisk and you know you might even want to wait till issue two or three are out uh before you decide to go back and, and pick it up yeah see what other people are saying yeah all right joe i do appreciate you filling in for doc uh uh godspeed to you doc hopefully you feel better next week we can't have you we can't wait to have you back on the channel but i do appreciate you coming and filling in joe yes get well soon